So, we, uh, the second point of our Bible study is the providence of God in a practical need that we've looked at. That God will meet your practical need. If you put him first, he will meet your need. The providence of God in marriage. Uh, we see in the book of Ruth a marriage. If you go to Ruth chapter 3 verse uh, 13. Ruth chapter 3 verse 13. It says, uh, Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform it unto the part of the kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part, but if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of the kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. In those days, if you if you like somebody and somebody like you, and they still do it in some Arab lands, is the woman lies near the foot of the man. <laughs> it's a strange uh, custom, I know, but that's what they did in the ancient times, and they do it in some cultures today. And Ruth did this to Boaz, and Boaz took the hint, and Boaz Basically, he's uh, wanting to marry Ruth. And so she gains a husband. And I just want to say that don't try and strive to get a marriage. You know, I went on a dating site uh, not so long ago, a few months ago. Well, about six months ago. And uh, basically, uh, the first person wanted to come and stay to the house. Another person wanted uh, thousands of pounds off me. Uh, for their asylum uh, application uh, and it's not a good thing um, if you're striving all the time to find a wife or find a husband you need to just relax and know that what will be will be in the sense that Ruth didn't have to strive she went to Bethlehem and there she just happened to meet Boaz in a field then she went and, and did what she had to do and he did what he had to do to make it happen but there'll come a point, if God wants you to be married, where you'll meet the right person. You'll just bump into them, and then you take it from there. But you don't have to go around striving all the time. Uh, just relax and know that God is with you. Genesis chapter 2, 21, 24. God said that when he made man and woman, he made them one. And so if you get married, it's very special. You become so intimately one. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, 33, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and wives, submit to your husbands. But the point is this, is that if you get married, there's responsibility. Then it's not just going to be like, oh, I'm married and, and, and great. There's going to be great responsibility in that marriage. So you need to count the cost now. Think about, do you really want to get married? And if you do get married, to make sure that you realize there's the great responsibility. So in you says marriage is exclusive union between one man and one woman, publicly acknowledged, permanently sealed and physically consummated. Marriage is a big commitment. It's probably the most important commitment next to your conversion that you'll ever make. So make sure you pray about it. Make sure you seek counsel. Make sure when you go ahead with a, a, a marriage that you've got peace. If you have not got peace, about that marriage, don't get married. You need to have that peace. Ruth had the peace, Boaz had the peace. But they went ahead and they got married and they were blessed. And if you have that peace, then go ahead and get married. And then finally, the providence of God in redemption. The providence of God in redemption. Here in the book of Ruth, Verse 16, chapter 4, Ruth chapter 4, verse 16. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became a nurse unto it. Became a nurse unto it. And so Naomi had a daughter-in-law who got married to Boaz and Ruth had a baby. And Naomi, the grandma, was well pleased. What does that mean? That baby became the great, 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 great granddad of Jesus. You see how that tragedy of Naomi losing her husband and her two sons has now led to her in that great tragedy and pain has now led to the full circle of her daughter-in-law marrying a man who's now they bear a child who's now going to be the Messiah. 
or the, the, the great great grandfather of the Messiah. You know, theologians talk about general um, providence and particular special providence or particular providence. General providence is the working of God in general, everyday things in our lives. Particular providence is what God has been doing throughout history through Jesus Christ. And all our blessings flow ultimately from the Messiah through Christ. If you look at Genesis 3.15, there is what is called the Proto-Evangelion. There, right at the beginning of the Bible, the Bible shows that Satan is going to be defeated by Christ when it says the, the serpent will be bruised by the woman. And right throughout history, right throughout history, God has been working through redemption, through redeeming uh, through Christ. And that's where history is centered. And so whenever we see ISIS and the crazy things that the Islamic extremists are doing, whenever we see the mess that we see in America or Syria and around the world today, let us know that God is on the throne and that he is working out his purposes through redemption. That, he, that Christ came into history and he is saving a people for himself and he will end this world one day and he will set up fully the, the glorious kingdom uh, of his son, Jesus Christ. We are part of that. So whenever it seems a mess in the world, we know that there's a higher authority and that things are okay in the hands of Christ because it will all work to the glory of him and honor of him. In final conclusion, and I need to go, Ruth stuck by Naomi in the thick of the problem. And it was a problem where there was no hope. Ruth and Naomi in Moab had no resources. They had nothing. It was desperate. But in the midst of that desperation, there was hope. Because God worked, provided food, provided a husband, and provided a ministry of bringing in the Messiah. In the midst of desolation and nothing. In the midst of brokenness. And in Genesis 15, 1, 5, Abraham had brokenness. He and his wife, Sarah, were elderly. They had no chance of having a son. And God promised that Abraham would have a son. And even Sarah laughed. Even Abraham laughed. But God worked through their brokenness. In their old age, they felt they would never have a child of their own. But God worked through that brokenness. And God will work through your brokenness. Where there seems to be no hope. Where there seems to be no way forward, God will make a way and work and give you hope in the midst of your brokenness. Neander says this, hope saves a man in the midst of misfortune. You might have had misfortune, you might be going through difficulty, it might be painful, but I want to tell you that you have a hope in Christ. And if you have a hope in Christ, in the midst of your brokenness, God is going to make a way. Be faithful like Ruth. She clung to Naomi. She clung to Naomi's God. And she clung faithfully. And as she was faithful, God made a way in the brokenness. And as you're faithful, I promise you, God will make a way in your brokenness. And he will bless you more abundantly than you've ever thought possible. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. I know it's difficult. I know maybe at this point in time in your life you're thinking, Jay, there is just no way I can do it anymore. At this point in my life I need this thing to be met. I need, I have a need that is to be met and God is not meeting that need and I just can't go on anymore and I want to tell you, no. Put God first. Just this one last time. Lift him up one last time. Go forward thinking of him. And I promise you in the midst of your brokenness, he will make a way for you. He will make a way. Because what you're doing is you're go when you put God first, you're, 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 you're pulling on the resources of God. You're pulling in the grace of God. You're pulling in the majesty of God. You're pulling in the beauty of God. You're pulling in the, the resources of the living God into your soul. And there'll be strength and there'll be power and there'll be joy and there'll be a victory in the midst of this pain that you have. And I know you have that pain. I know you're in pain. I know you're in pain. 
And it, and it might seem you're trying to get rid of the pain. It might seem you've cried to God to get rid of the pain. It might seem you, that, that, that pain is never going to go away. It might seem that that pain is just so much that you're tired of it. Week after week, year after year, and the pain is there and you can't cope with it. But I'm telling you, if you do a Ruth and say, you are my God and I will be faithful to you, I promise you, as you do that, God will make a way for you. I'll give you an encouragement. I, I was struggling the other day. I've been struggling for a long time. I don't find it easy being single. I tell you that now. I really don't find it easy being single. I find it a trial. And there's some dear brothers and sisters who have a prayer meeting. On a Monday, and it's not the usual prayer meeting that I go to or Bible study. We have one on a Thursday and I'm, I'm doing stuff that, that I'm doing with, with my brothers and sisters uh, in, in Bible study and preaching and, and what have you. And I, I felt a real need to pray. I felt a real need to pray for this nation. And I went on Monday, that was yesterday. And the joy, the peace, the power, the blessings of knowing God and, 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 and focusing on God rather than my problem, rather than my singleness, rather than my need. And I felt so blessed. So I can say when we focus on God, He will bless us. And uh, He might provide a wife, He might not. I hope He does provide a wife for me. But the point is this, is that when we focus on God, we get the resources of heaven come down and give us the strength that we need in time of trouble. And I promise you that if you do that, in the midst of your pain, that he will, you, the, the resource of God will come. And the practical needs, he will meet those practical needs. He, he is a faithful God. And in his time, he will meet the practical needs. And, and, and when he does it, he'll be blessed. When he does it, he'll be beautiful. But the spiritual need can be met right now, right this minute, by just turning away from that pain and just saying, Lord, I'm shedding my tears. I'm struggling, but I'm focusing on you and I'm praising you, I'm worshipping you, I'm honouring I'm honoring you, I'm glorifying you. And I don't find this easy. I find this a battle. I find this a struggle. I find this difficult. It's hard. It's a battle. It's a battle. It's a battle. I'm battling every day. I'm battling every day. And it's just a battle, 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 battle. And he knows that you're having this battle, but he wants us to focus on him. And as we focus on him and lift him up, there's a shalom and a blessing. And God will meet the rest of the need in his time. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, bless my brothers and sisters today in the midst of their storm, in the midst of their battle, in the midst of the, what they're trying, Lord. And I pray that you'll give them faith. I pray that you'll give them encouragement. I pray that you'll lift them out of whatever they're struggling with, Lord, and that you will help them to focus on you. And I pray the need that they have, the physical, spiritual, mental, emotional need that they have right now, Lord, that my brothers and sisters, that you would, Father, bless them and meet that need this week, Lord, that they would meet the woman, a wife, a husband they need, that they would have a victory over their sin, that they would get strength in the midst of their depression, whatever it is Lord whatever they are struggling with Lord that you would meet their need and fill them with your love and give them all that they need and all the blessings that they need in the name of Jesus for your glory hallelujah hallelujah in Jesus name amen God bless you take care I gotta go and uh, take care God bless